I think it'd be really cool if you could take some photos of your guys' homebrew day, post them in the comments below, like this video, share it. It'd be really cool to see your guys' homebrew setups and what you're doing at home, what you're doing differently. So feel free to comment away. Welcome, Public House Brewing Company. Matt Burkhart here, head brewer. Uh, today we are celebrating the world's largest virtual big brew day coming at you. Woo! So today, to honor all our home brewing fans, we've put together a five gallon recipe of our famous tire swing. Tire swing was one of our original recipes that Josh Stacy and Josh Goodrich concocted in their garage while they were concocting this crazy idea to make a brewery. It's one of the original recipes. They brewed it for several years over there in Rolla. Uh, it is currently not in production, but we still brew it occasionally for a little special release. So today in honor of Home Brew Day, we decided to release the recipe to home brewers. And uh, if you were able to get over to the pub and purchase one of our kits that we put together for you, awesome, good job. If not, you can still brew it at home because I got the recipe right here and you can follow along. So let me just go down the recipe real quick. So if you wanna pick up the ingredients later, you can and watch this video later and uh, do this at a different date. So we're gonna mash in with 14 pounds of pale ale, one and a half pounds of Munich 10, and about three quarters pound of a caramel or crystal 60. Uh, we're gonna mash with about five and a half gallons of water targeting about 151 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a good temperature to Allow the beer to just leave a little bit of malt sweetness, malt character behind, but still finish a little bit dry and attenuate out. Then we're gonna run off and sparge with about 4.6 gallons of water to get us up to kettle full, targeting about 168 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna boil for about 60 minutes. And then here's the hop rundown for that boil. At, right at boil, we're gonna add one ounce of centennial hops. 15 minutes in, we're gonna add a half ounce of centennial hops. And then with 15 minutes left to go in the boil, we're gonna add a half ounce of Cascade hops. And then at Whirlpool or Flame Out, we're gonna add half ounce of Cascade hops again. We're gonna boil that, like I said, for 60 minutes. We got all our hops in there. We're gonna cool the wort down, get us down to a good pitching temperature. Today we're gonna pitch with a Fermentus Seifel uh, US05, about 11 grams. We'll ferment that for about seven to 10 days until we've reached uh, target final uh, gravity. It's done fermenting. It's cleaned up. And then we're going to add, we're going to add some dry hops to this. Dry hopping for three days. We're going to add one ounce of Cascade and one ounce of Centennial hops. Keep it real, real clean. Keep it traditional, nice American IPA. All right. So just for a heads up, if you want to know, target OG is 1064. Target fermentation and there is about 1012 and uh, should be about 6.9%, 6.8 by the time all said and done. So that's the recipe. We're gonna go ahead and get started. All right. All right, guys, here we are getting ready to mill. I got our grain all weighed out. Uh, got the 14 pounds of pale ale, the pound and a half of uh, Munich 10, and about three quarter pound, uh, just a little bit of C60 in there. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a look at our little homebrew mill set up here. I just wanted to give a shout out to our guys out at the farm who actually manufactured this little uh, guy for us here, this cart. Uh, they did a phenomenal job and we appreciate all their hard work out there. Not only do they take great care of our vineyards and making sure that the St. James Winery is as top notch as everybody expects it to be, they did a number on this guy. Um, we had an old mill uh, bought a little motor for it. They built the stand. Works out real slick. So I'm going to set this phone down real quick here and get ready to mill some grain. All right, guys, getting ready to mill some grain here. Uh, I do not have a uh, assistant with me today, so I'm having to do all my own product shots. So here we go. Welcome back guys. Uh, I just now got our hot water. Uh, it's currently heating up right now in our mash tun. Uh, water was a little low on temp so I'm trying to bring it up. 
Uh, so I thought I'd just take the time to go over our system here, our little homebrew five gallon system that we use for some of our R&D work here. It ain't pretty, but it gets the job done. Uh, so if Santa Claus is listening, maybe for Christmas this year, huh, huh? Anyway, so, uh, sorry. Uh, right up here is our, what we use is our hot liquor tank. Um, heat up the water in here, bring it down into our mash tun and add our grain. So right now I brought the water down in here. I was a little low, wasn't quite happy with it. So I fired up the burner down here to kick up the heat a little bit more. Uh, then down below that, as you can tell, it's all a gravity fed system, no pumps involved. Uh, down below here is our boil kettle. So uh, then after that, we'll just run that out into a carboy and be good to go. I'm gonna check this temp real quick and see where we're at. Uh, getting real close, our target mash temperature again is 151. Uh, I want to be at least 10 to 12 degrees higher than that before I start adding the grain because as you guys know You're gonna lose some of that temperature. So to hit that 151. We got to be a little bit higher It's about 158 right now, so just a couple more minutes and we'll be uh, good to get mashed in all right, welcome back. Got the water up to temp. I'm going to turn off the, I'm going to kill the flame, and we're going to start mashing in. Now, there's a couple of different ways you can go about doing this. Since I'm here by myself, I got all the water in there right away. Got it up to temp. Uh, now I'm going to add a little bit of grain, stir it in, add a little more grain, stir it in, and trying to make sure we don't get any of those nasty dough balls. Again, I'm just mixing this grain up, making sure it's nice and consistent. No big grain, no big go balls in there that are going to rob us of getting all our extract out of here. Oh, it smells good. It really does. It really does. Hope you guys are enjoying your mash in process at home right now. Maybe you've uh, got a coffee going, or drinking a homebrew, or maybe even a coffee beer. I'm thinking a Giddy Go Coffee Milk Stout sounds real good right now. That's the last of the grain I got in there. I'm just make, doing a final mix in here, getting sure, making sure it's all mixed in. Good consistency, no balls, no no balls. All right, now it'll be time to check the temperature and see how we did. We got 152, 150, 150, 1.9, it's closer to the door, so a little colder on that side of the mash. 151.3, all right, I'm going to close this thing up, put a lid on it, we nailed it. I'm going to close that garage door down, let it sit for about 60 minutes. All those starches are going to get converted into that good sugar. So the yeast can eat away at that. I'm gonna get this closed down. We'll be back in about 60 minutes. All right, take care. All right, guys, welcome back. We're nearing the end of our mash, that 60 minute time frame. So I'm now getting ready to take the lid off of our mash pot. Um, I've added some more hot water to our hot liquor tank. I'm starting to get that up to temp. I turned the flame off right now so you could hear me talk. Uh, but I'll have some time to get that temp back up back up there while I'm doing the Vorloffing process. So now I'm preparing to do that. Uh, I'm going to take a lid off this pot. I'm going to check our temperature, see kind of about how the temperature stayed while in the mashing process. And then I'm going to start the Vorloff. So let's take a peek, shall we? Wow. 
We're about 151.7 right here. We're 152.3 over here. And 152.2 right there. So pretty close to staying right on target for our mash temperature of 151. So it stayed good that whole 60 minutes. Uh, pretty good, good mash. So I'm gonna go ahead and get ready for our Vorloffing process. Uh, most of you guys know what that is. If anybody's watching the video that's not quite sure, or maybe you're new to home brewing, Vorloffing is just a, it's a German term in the brewing world for clarifying the wort. So right now, here in our mash, uh, the liquid, what's below our false bottom down there, could have some grain chunks in it. And so we just need to take all that liquid from below that mesh, uh, that false bottom, and put it right back on top so it clarifies the wort. So everything that goes into our kettle down here is nice and clear. So, one second. Move our lid. So, like I said, this is just a gravity fed system. Uh, we do not have the uh, functionality of any pumps here. So I kind of have to go old school with our Borloffing process and I use a couple pitchers here from the bar. Um, if Santa's listening, that new homebrew system, huh? Huh? What do you think? <laughs> Still waiting on that Red Rider BB gun too, by the way. So uh, let me get this camera turned a little bit so you guys can better see what I'm doing here. Let me bring you in. Like I said, no, uh, no assistance today, so I gotta do everything myself. All right, so we're gonna start the boil off process. I'm just gonna start collecting some of the wort off the bottom of our mash pot and uh, collect it, and then we're just gonna pour it right on back on top. Don't wanna go too fast with this process. Don't wanna collapse the bed. Uh, and compact the grain, so just kind of keeping it nice and slow, uh, trying not to aerate the wort as much as possible, and uh, kind of, I'll do this for the next 10 minutes or so until I get a nice clear wort and that I'm happy with, and then we will start running off into the kettle. You know, I hope all you guys out there are enjoying the big brew day. Hope everybody's uh, staying healthy and safe. Uh, you know, during that mash time, during that 60 minutes, I was doing a lot of reflecting on, you know, how much I miss our fellow home brewers that come into the pubs and, and ask the questions and talk and have a beer with and all our regulars. I hope you guys are all doing good out there and I can't wait to see you back again here real soon, so. All right, first one's collected. I'm just going to pour it right on back. Actually, I believe I have a hose here that makes this a little easier. Now I can get two, two pots going at once, kind of save me some time and keep this Vorloff process going. All right, there's another pitcher that I'm gonna go ahead and add back to the mash, just being real gentle with it. got a little bit of a I got a clearer picture here that maybe you can kind of see the first wart color a uh, little darker since it's in a big picture like like this but um, you can see maybe you can see there's still some uh, particulates floating around in there uh, it's coming out fairly clear uh, it'll be a few more minutes yet I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing on pause and uh, we'll see you back when the Vorloff's over okay guys welcome back 
Uh, just finished with the Vorloffing process. I got nice clear wart here and I put it in a better glass so maybe you guys can see kind of the color of the first warts, what they look like. Nice copper color. Real happy about that. Real happy with the clarity. So now it's going to be the time that we start running off into the kettle from our mash pot into our kettle down here. So I'm going to go ahead and just open up that valve ever so slightly and get it rocking and rolling. Alright, I just cracked that valve ever so slightly, about a quarter crack or so. We got a real nice flow going. I'm real happy about it. So we're going to let that run. I got my water up to temp in here for our sparge water. I think it's about 4.6 gallons that we're shooting for. I got the temp just right around 168. Uh, so it'll be good temperature to sparge with. And uh, now let's check. I'm going to go ahead and check the gravity of our first runnings. So I got our sample. I'm using our refractometer here. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and use a pipette, drop a little bit of uh, wart on here and see what we get. Sorry, the camera angle's kind of bad. Can't show you too well there. But I got the sample put on the slide, slide covers down. All right, we're looking about 1079 for our first runnings. Um, targeting a uh, kettle full to be about that 164. So we're set up for a pretty good spot. So once we get this kettle full, I think we'll, we'll be close to that 1064. So, all right, I'll catch you guys back here in just a second as we fill up this kettle. All right, guys, welcome back. We have kettle full. I turned the burner on about three quarters halfway through the runoff. So we're currently heating up in our oil kettle there. I just wanted to give you guys an update how things are going here. So I took a sample of our last runnings here. Well, actually, sorry, I dumped the last runnings already. Uh, last runnings were, um, shoot, uh, 1018, I believe. So there was about four and a half Play-Doh uh, left um, for the last runnings. I just pulled the uh, kettle full sample, stirred it up, got a good mix, nice beautiful color on that. Um, for a kettle full, um, right before boil, our gravity right now is about 1054, 1055, and with our pot here, we generally see eight to 10 points gained uh, after, the end, after the boil. So I have no concerns that we will get to our target gravity of 1064. Um, I just wanted to, I'll take you guys for a little walk here. There's the final, um, final shot of our mash. Let's see, nice good grain bed left over there. And then over here is our pot heating up. Nice foam kind of starting to build on it already. I need to get some uh, defoamer in there before we get too hard of a boil. Sorry for the shaking. I took you guys off the tripod so I could bring you around. Um, haven't had a beer yet today, so still a little shaky. Um, all right, so I'm gonna get some defoamer in our pot so that way we don't have a nasty boil over. I'm gonna kind of do some cleaning up, get rid of our spent grain here. That's gonna go in with all our other spent grains. Uh, from our brew days out here at Public House. That's gonna go out and feed some local cows. So I'm gonna get that cleaned up while this is getting up to a boil. So I will see you guys back when it's time to add some hops. All right guys, uh, that didn't take long to get up to a boil. As you can see, I got a nice rolling boil already. Got a little deep foamer in there to help keep that down, keep that foam down. Um, good hard boil going. So time to start our timer and add some hops. I got some nice centennial hops, about an ounce right here. You always got to make sure you smell them before you put them in. They're real good. I'm going to turn that boil down real quick. She was starting to get real active. We're going to add some hops in there. One ounce of centennial. There we 
go. Just try to get a little active on me. Nice rolling boil. It's all calmed back down now. So we're going to go ahead and start the timer here. And uh, I'll see you back maybe for a couple more hop additions. All right. Okay, guys, welcome back. We're about 15 minutes into our boil here of our tire swing IPA. Got the next round of some Centennial hops, another half ounce going into the kettle right now. All right. Now, kind of get to some little more important things. I know you guys are at home making some home brew, probably drinking a home brew or drinking a beer. Uh, I couldn't let you guys drink alone. I'm a good guy like that. Uh, so I wanted to put in a little plug for our Dry Fly IPA. We've made it a couple years in the past. Uh, it's been in our variety pack. It's been on draft only. But this year we canned it up with a really great label on it of a, of a Dry Fly fishing lure. and. Uh, this is tasting really good. I hope you guys get a chance to get down to the pub in Rolla uh, and buy a six pack or a case of it and enjoy. So, cheers. <sighs> That's good. Okay guys, welcome back. We're uh, getting along in our boil now. You can tell that I've gone ahead and added our immersion chiller for when it so it gets sanitized for when it's time to start cooling the wort down to pitching temperatures. Um, I've also gone ahead and weighed out our half ounce of Cascade hops. They're going to go in with 15 minutes left of the boil. So I'm going to go ahead and add those now. Get those in there. All right. During this time period, uh, I've got my carboy soaking with some cleaner getting that all cleaned and ready to go. Um, immersion chillers in there. So I think I'm squared away to finish up this boil here. All right, we'll see you back in a few. All right, guys, we finally made it to the end of boil. I got my last half ounce of Cascade hops here getting ready to go in. I'm gonna go ahead and kill the flame, toss these in, give it a little bit of a whirlpool spin and try to get most of that stuff to kind of settle out in the bottom. However, I do have a screen in the bottom of my, uh, the outlet of my kettle that catches most of this stuff but it's still a good thing to do to kind of add a little bit of whirlpool action so here we go all right guys so i've gone ahead killed the flame on the boil boil is over uh added a little bit of hops uh now it's time to get the water turned on and start cooling our wort down to pitching temperatures Okay, so while off camera, I had grabbed a little sample of our uh, end of boil to see what we hit for our gravity. So I'm going to take my refractometer again, grab a little sample. And we'll see how we did. All right. We are at about 10, 1060, 1068. So we went over a little bit, boiled a little probably harder than I had to. Uh, definitely got good efficiency in that kettle. A huh, little more alcohol, eh. Anyway, turned out well. We'll go ahead and get this cooled down and then we'll start uh, putting it into the carboy and getting ready to pitch some yeast. All right, see you in a few. All right, guys, we made it to the end of our brew day today. I uh, got our wort cooled down to ale pitching temperatures, about 68 degrees. So I'm ready to go ahead and start filling our carboy. Uh, while I was off camera, I went ahead and sanitized our carboy. Got a, a hose clean and sanitized so we can go ahead and start filling this guy up. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. All right, I don't know if you guys can see that too well or not. Um, so we got a nice copper color for this tire swing IPA. Looking forward to it, guys. Hope your brew day went well. Thanks for joining in. And uh, keep supporting us out there. Keep getting to the pump, buying some six packs out there at the gas station or at your local liquor stores. Um, really appreciate it all, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. If there's any questions or whatnot, just 
add them into the comments section. I'll try to get to them as they come through. Um, anyway, enjoy the day. We'll see you later. Cheers.